That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. You can't stop me. I'm going to win. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. I won't quit. I just keep getting stronger. 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 Do we even? I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit it record. Because it would. With it. Welcome to the pump. Because I don't know what episode this is. This is like. Who knows? Kyle was making fun of us on, on his podcast, but he's like, he was on our mine, and then it was mine to yours and ours, and I think we're like twenty or thirty episodes deep. But we don't actually do numbers, so now yeah. we, and we don't have guests anymore, just because like I've been busy with a kid. It's way yeah. easier just to do us talking, so might just do that. Well, yeah, and and honestly, like we fucking spend so much time talking anyways like we might as well record it and make it worthwhile yeah i don't I, like the the main things that like is it even so i know we like have the pump and it's called the pump and whatever we talk a lot about nutrition as well and so like it, where does nutrition fit in pumping does it is that like part of uh, that i mean thing? i think so don't you yeah it's just like i mean i know you don't lift anymore but you know, like with people that lift you know you, you've got to have like some glycogen and you've got to have some uh yeah. some carbs in there and so there's just some nutrition aspect to getting a pump i just feel like like so for everyone like update wise it's like i'm not lifting for like a year <laughs> so like can are I even... you really gonna do a whole year no like i don't know like it's one of those things where like having a kid and then like i was going through like trying to deadlift 700 again like and it was gonna be 750 and then it was just like fucking me up and then with jujitsu and stuff it was like if i don't take a step back from lifting i don't know if i can fix the problems i have because lifting is the reason why i'm <laughs> up. and so it was like at some point i don't know you're, you're 40 but and some people listen that are younger but like i'm in my mid-30s and i've tried everything except for not lifting because i was like lifting will fix everything and lifting is just really not fix anything it made it all worse <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't start lifting until my almost mid thirty. You're not like lifting consistently and like on a program. So like for me, like my shit's starting to break down in the last couple of years. But you yeah. got, you know, probably you probably have actually a longer lifting history than I do. Yeah, and so you your breakdown probably started sooner. Like, like, like I don't know. Like I was part of that culture where like like when I first started lifting, West Side was big and like Joe DeFranco and like. Yeah, like we didn't have direction. Like I don't know how schools are in the states. I do kind of. We traveled there once to play in San Diego, and like they have whole programs with strength and conditioning coaches. They didn't have that. We we just kind of like lifted, and like I I liked lifting weights. So you just go to the gym and lift, and you don't have to for football here because no one actually gives a shit. And so obviously, like Joe DeFranco was big, but I was like lifting with chains and, and shit, like just just lifting. I like I didn't know how to lift. You just fucking do what these guys did, which was. I don't know, lift. And I think that that's where I fucked up because when you have no guidance at 13, 14 years old and you don't know how to lift, you just kind of go up and down. And I just did it awful. Like I was, I, I believe, I, I'm pretty sure I was hurt like every year since then. Like, fuck like, back up, fuck this up. And it's just like, did you do like box squats and stuff back then? Yeah. Like, it, I feel like that would have been, I feel like, I feel like from, from a football standpoint, I think that that whole West Side like template was really good. Yeah. Like from an athletic development, like I don't know. Like I really like like the, the wide stance box squats, like um the the you know accommodating resistance kind of stuff. Like you know, I mean, that led into all that like uh triphasic stuff that Cal Deeds put together. And I think I was talking with this with James, but I was like maybe it wasn't James, maybe anyways. Point is it was like I don't know if the lifting itself, like even if it would even if that stuff was good, I was probably butchering it, but the lifting itself got me stronger because you lift and you get stronger and then yeah. you feel better and so like i was athletic but i also felt like i was tough shit because i lifted and so i think yeah. that's where it was more helpful because i now looking back i don't know if working out really would have made me that much better at football i was a fucking db so, like me being me being 20 pounds heavier than everyone was probably not that helpful but in my head it was were you a, were you a, uh, like a strong safety or you weren't a corner? Yeah, were you? In, in Canada, it would be, they have halfbacks, which is like a strong safety. Okay. Uh, sort of. And so, cause there's an extra person on the field, right? And so I was more of a halfback. So I would have been a strong safety. 
So it was yeah. I was a I was a corner, which like I always I wanted to be free safety because we played a we played a, a three man uh, coverage. So there was like you know two corners and a, a free safety, and I always wanted to be free safety because we usually played zone. And I always felt like the free safety just got to level people because just coming in for coverage and just smacking someone across. See, this is the fucked up thing. So, like, strong, it's different because not strong safety. Our fields are wider, too. So, I actually just ran around a lot and I didn't get hit anymore because, like, I have to cover the most field. So, I have to cover usually the fastest guys lined up with me because there's the most field because it's, yeah, we also have running starts here. And so, like, what? Yeah. So, you don't have to be planted on the line. So, well, you do, but like, so you get more people called off, off, off the line. Anyways, long story short, right. is like those middle, so your slots would yeah. be, have a running start. Like it's fucked. So like. Gee, so how far off the line do you play as a DB? Five, and then you kind of slowly back. Jesus. Seven, and then seven <laughs> as they're hitting full speed. So it's like me being big, was it helpful? But <laughs> I okay, know. so I would I want to understand how anyone ever misses if you have a decent the most basic passing offense. I feel it, like it would be so easy to get a first down. Yeah, well, it, it, it well it. it I mean, you could you could throw five yard passes all day long if the guy's getting a running start. Yeah, it's a throwing leap. Like that, this is where it's kind of stupid. So like that's is that, that's why Warren Moon did so well there. He played that yeah. run and gun. Yeah. That, when it came to to Houston. Yeah, but the problem is there's only three down. So if you miss one play, you're fucked. So like, it's, oh, okay, that makes more sense. So Jesus. it's like, it's like it's a risk reward because obviously, like at at those levels, like especially before college, like people aren't actually completing passes. <laughs> like it's not like in the states, you know, you have like legit like whatever four or five star quarterback who like could go yeah. not go pro, but yeah. they can step in. Like that doesn't happen. Like, you, you run in in Canada because it's like yeah, not that. Like good. we had a kid, the kid that. The kid that played college, that played our our quarterback, my sophomore year, because I played varsity sophomore at the end, and then and then junior. But uh, the our quarterback was legit. Like on, he had a, a he had a D one top level arm. He was five eight. Yeah. No chance. No chance. no chance. Like he couldn't go anywhere. But man, this guy could throw. I mean, it was like he was a fucking. He in was Canada, a, a, you, in Canada. You, you those guys can play here. Like that's yeah, Doug Flutie, right? Was he like five two? Yeah, Doug Flutie is like our <laughs> our like bastion of like. See, Canadian football is awesome because because Doug Flutie. <laughs> Doug Flutie is like the, the is like the the minute bowl. I mean, not the, not the minute bowl. The uh, spud web spud web of uh of of football. Yeah, but he was. I don't know how he transferred that to the NFL. That I don't think anyone understands that because like theoretically he shouldn't be in the NFL, but he was just kind of like gritty and like sneaky because like he can't see over those guys like i don't Dude. know <laughs> i mean when i when i played in texas so my freshman year of high school i was still in texas and i i didn't really play football it was like it just wasn't going to happen there uh until i moved to maryland but it, it, the average lineman for our varsity team was six foot five 300 pounds in high school yeah that's <laughs> Like that's stupid. It's that stupid. You guys, I think it's just you have more people. Like obviously, you have a well, and more interest, internet, more more interest, more programs, more filter systems. Like I'm watching this Last Chance You show on Netflix. Yeah, it, it, there was a football one, and now they have a basketball one. And this one dude was like, "Yeah, I'm a point guard or a shooting guard," and I'm like six two. And then they're talking about they're like, "Yeah, at six two, like he's got to be so much better. He's gonna be perfect." Yada yada. Yep. yada. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, you, this guy is like 6'9", but he's 6'9". All he has to do is you pass him the ball, he does the two dunks, and he can guard the other 6'9s, and here's your, all your money. And I was like, at 6'2", this motherfucker can't, like, he has to try, like, be the best to even make have a chance to, like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. Like, it's- My dad played basketball at Duke in, like, 69 and 70, 70, 71. And uh, he said the coach pulled him aside. And uh, said to him, he's like, he's like, Sam, you're, you know, you're pretty good at math, right? And he said, yeah, yeah. He said, I know you're tutoring some of the guys on the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you ever think maybe you're pursuing that instead of basketball? <laughs> My dad's like, what do you mean? He's like, hey, it's six foot two white guys that can shoot are kind of a dime a dozen. Yeah. You know, you might want to look at something else. <laughs> that was the fucked up thing. So like, he did the numbers, and like, again, we don't have that many people in Canada. There's like, I think there's like thirty million, but like per like in the big cities, like there's just not. You guys have so many more fucking people. This guy was like, yeah, it's 6'2", shooting guard. He's like, there is literally thousands in my position looking for that Div 1 spot. I was like, yeah. Like, yeah. 
there's not even a thousand of those people here that are good at basketball. Like, <laughs> but let's let's take it let's take it down. Let's let's talk about hockey though. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you know, what is the competition level? I mean, you've got you've got kids that are 12 years old that are already being scouted by pro hockey teams. Yeah, well, because our filter system is different here. Because like, yeah, the ones the ones like you just play hockey. That's someone was asking me about that, like the Canadian thing. But they're like, yeah, like you probably know what hockey tournaments are like. I'm like, yeah, like of course. Like it's not even like a second thought. Like it's just like, you just play hockey. But yeah. The, you don't need to be six foot two to play hockey, and if you are, like, and you're good, you probably just like again. Here's the money. But, yeah, but that's so that's like, but that's the thing. Is like if you think about like a system that you know it, you're set. You're 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 this. You know that every single person is going to be skilled by the time they're twelve. You just wait for the genetics to catch up at that point. So it's like, I mean, they're ahead of the game so far. It's insane. Whereas for us, it's like the cool thing is you can teach people skills for the most part in a couple of years. Like, like you said, if you're six foot nine, I remember. Uh, so when I was in high school too, they had the uh, they had the combine for colleges. So I went to that, and it was like we're sitting there, and there's this kid, and he gets up and it's laser timed forty yard dashes. And I think he runs a four two, and they're like, "This thing's wrong. Do it again." Runs like a four one eight. They're like, "Okay, does it again?" And I have three times. Like they're like. This kid's running a sub four two forty. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I watch him play and catch, and it's like they're throwing the ball. It's like hitting him in the head, hitting him in the chest. One of the coaches looks over. He's like, "I don't give a shit at that kid. We'll teach him to catch. All he got to do is run." He's gonna run. <laughs> like, like if he catches one out of four balls, it's a touchdown. Well, that that's kind of like the lifting thing. Is like I didn't have like that's what that. And I'm serious. Like where I like I've now changed my mind. Like before I was like because I was lifting, I was biased. I'm like lifting is the way to the fucking the money and it's not the way to the money because like i was pretty good at football and like i was smart and i was fast i was really fast but i was really strong and i go to the combine and did really good at all the strength stuff and like i i did like a four like four eight forty so like not like like fast though that's fast no i'm not like a four four and i'm not i'm too big and uh, i wasn't good enough at football in the genetics the guys who like all got drafted like don't lift i was like fuck (laughs) I, I, I put so much effort into this. Like my bench, I did I 225, 25 times. Like, doesn't that mean anything? They're like, no, no, no. does it no. not at all? <clears throat> Especially not DB. Yeah. I mean, because honestly, at four eight, as, as a defensive back at four eight, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't even make you, you'd, you'd barely, you squeak maybe into like division two here. You'd have to play linebacker. They would just they all they, and then what they would have done is they would have pumped, they would have gotten you bigger and and made you an outside linebacker here. But well, like I ran like I ran a four, I ran a four six, and I went to. Ohio, I mean, Ohio State, Penn State's football camp. And I was pretty fast. Like, I was a fast kid. And uh, I got on the line, and I remember there's a dude next to me who's, like, two inches shorter than me and probably weighed, like, you know, I was, like, 165 pounds or 160 pounds or something. This guy had to be 205, just solid muscle. And uh, we start running, and we're kind of, like, in the same for the first, like, five, ten yards. And then he just keeps going. And I'm just, like, looking. I'm, like, what the fuck? And there's guys that are, like, you know, 6'4", 240 that are running the same speed as me and faster and i was like what am i doing here this <laughs> is stupid yeah you can you can lift your way onto the team and like it, it doesn't really really work that way because it's just i don't know it's just a different- but that's like i mean you know it's funny because i was telling sarah about this because so you know in new york people some people lift but it's definitely not new york city is no longer like this like you know bodybuilding lifting mecca like it was when Ferrigno and I mean Kai Green's still there and and yeah there's like some of it but that's out in Queens or out in like Bev Francis out in Long Island so it's not really this thing in the city anymore so most everyone's kind of got this like skinny aesthetic you know people will want to look kind of skinny so I've moved down to South Carolina and there is just some corn fed like just giant motherfuckers here so I go to the gym there's there's like there's a few IFBB pros that train at this gym I go to and there's one guy in particular who's probably my height, and I'm guessing he's probably 250. I don't know. Like, he's, he's he's big, big. He's the biggest guy in the gym. So I thought, till this motherfucker walks in yesterday, and I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive he's not a competitive bodybuilder because he's kind of chubby. But this guy's probably, I don't even know how tall. He, you know, it's one of those people who's probably 6'2", but he looks like he's 6'8", because he's just so fucking huge. His traps were, like, popping out of his shirt like nothing I've ever seen. But it's like one of these things where you see one of these giant humans. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he's on drugs, but I don't think he's on many drugs. Like, I think he's one of these guys who's just, like, built like that. And you're like, this is fucking insane. Yeah, like, 
like, like those are the guys like like I, I know a lot of people say like genetics matter and they, they, they kind of think they know what they mean but like like those people don't actually play sports they're like yeah it was just the genetics but when the people with good genetics say like there's people with better genetics that's when you really <laughs> understand that because like i have good genetics like i'm fast strong i've been i got scholarships whatever i didn't go pro i wasn't there uh, there's people who are like two bars above me and then there's another bar above that and like some of them don't even play sports because they're too busy like just not caring about that shit and they're 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 around and when you see them you know and like that's yeah. guy. It's just like he's like yeah i don't like i like lifting or he didn't like football or whatever, but like he should yeah. be, he should have a full scholarship somewhere. Yeah, I mean, like when I was at when I was at Penn State for that camp, it was like you were just around. I mean, it was one of those things where you're just like you realize what genetics, what really, what actual high level. I mean, the, the one kid, Joe Paterno, used to sit at our breakfast table every day and beg this kid to pay play football there. And he was a kid from like Alabama. He's like, no nah, man, he's like, I just, I just want, I want, I want to stay sat down south because you know I don't, I don't really want to go somewhere where it's cold. And I'm like. This is fucking nine. It's 1994. That's Joe fucking Paterno, and you don't give a shit. Like this is, I mean, probably good because you know that that program turned out to be a little bit <laughs> sketchy, anyways. But you know, I mean, it was that was the, I mean, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And this kid was a running back, and he was just like, and Joe Paterno was like, oh come on, and I'm like, I'm like, they're actively recruiting. And like Joe Paterno was not there for the camp. He was not there. Like he wasn't there out watching anybody. He was just coming to try and get this one kid to play for him. And the kid's like, nope no desire but yeah. you know you would watch these guys and these guys kids didn't really i mean they probably worked out a little bit but they probably went and did some bench press squatted more you know at 16 than i have in my life and you know and we're like oh i'm good yeah like there, there's stories about that and that's where like cause we're in the evidence-based crowd and like you kind of hear the arguments like yeah, yeah genetics yeah 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 and like you know all those people don't they don't actually know what they're talking about but like, but like there's six and they're like yeah there's like people in like the weight room at like at a high school in texas they're like they're squatting 500 pounds I'm like you've never seen that person when you see that person you will actually you won't even say it's about genetics you'll just be like there's fucking people that are better than all of you like it, it's not a they're just a different like, breed i know those, it's genetics but like you won't even say it like that but those are the people that i tell sarah i'm like that's when you look and you say thank god it's not like Viking times because so because we would be fucking walking around with like you know like if if the world was determined by the guy who could just smash your skull open with their hand like I look at I look at Brock Lesnar and I say the scariest thing on earth is someone who has fucking see through eyebrows and is that big like that's the kind of shit. If there weren't guns, like if guns weren't created, like Brock Lesnar, like him and a few, he would just he'd be the world's leader. Yeah, he would have like ten wives, and like he would breed yeah. all. Like they would, it, there would be more Brock Lesnar's. It's like if guns weren't created, there would, it would we would actually be bigger. Maybe that's the. Yeah, and, and you look at him, and you look at him, and I'm like, this guy's eyebrows are clear. Like that seems like a big genetic like fuck up. <laughs> even even the way he got busted for what T ball or some shit, but they're like, eh, it's the, that. I'm like, he's been doing steroids forever, a, eh? and he was way, he was huge before. Like it's, look at him when he's wrestling in college like he was a monster i love i love that he got dinged for steroids oh my god at that point i literally i think steroids help obviously but like he, he would he's he's just a monster like and they're all on steroids so like that I, see, those levels they are and like i know people are against steroids in, in fighting sports but i'm sorry like there's part of me because i still like even though the UFC is like a legitimate, you know, sport, like I still look at it kind of like WWE in the eighties. Like I want my dudes to be freaks. Like I want to, like, I want to see Alistair Overeem, like fully juiced to the gills, like in the ring. Like, they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's getting older and stuff. He's just not on TRT or whatever, but it's like, it, exactly. It's like the, the reason why those sports and like, it's just like steroids and like NFL, like I get it. Like even playing field, yada, yada, yada. But like these, these are spectator sports. It's like no, no one's bitching about it in WWE. Why are we drug testing those motherfuckers? Like it's not fair. Well, they do. No, they stop. They stop. They they kind of they crack down on WWE. That's why everyone looks like shit now. They all look like your accountant. Have you watched? Do you watch the no, WWE have, anymore? No. Like pull up WWE. WWE. Like it's not like when when I was a kid and you know there was these just like. Scott Steiner, who was just like, just his his he would flex and his bicep peak would touch his his hand, like 
<laughs> it was they're stupid. Test- is this surreal? St- like they're testing? I don't know if they test te- like I they they had a big crackdown. So like I, I know Vince McMahon looks smaller and like like he's not. No, Vince smaller. McMahon's still juiced up. I think because he looks amazing. I mean, for a guy his age, I mean, he's pretty incredible. But no, there's um, there's there's like there was like Congress or something like somehow got involved and like. They were there was a whole like big brouhaha and so they like you can kind of see the delineation like it went from like when dudes were like super jacked and huge and then everything started small and, and like some of it's like the audience i guess it's like crossfit like people want to see people that look like them who are like super athletes and so that, that, I, I don't know like that that that's a culture thing like that fucking pisses me off it's like like if you actually get offended by like the fact that they're more jacked than you like, like i don't think they're i don't think people are offended it's just like what sells like I guess things have, you know, it's like social media though. Like, yeah. if you can relate to someone, you'll buy something from them more. I don't like it, that. And I, 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 I want to see, like, I want to be entertained. Like, that's the whole fucking yeah. thing of it. I guess if you're entertained though by people that, because you feel like you have a chance, I get that. But, like, people need to understand you don't have a chance. That's the whole point of this is like, you're literally, this is your spot in society. I know you want to feel like this, but, like, you're not that. That's why you're watching. Well, it's like when people talk about like politics and they, they want to re- vote for the president that they, they they're like you know i want the guy that's like me that's down home that i have a beer with i was like i don't i don't want fucking me to run anything i want someone who's a lot better than me like i am not equipped to run a country like when they were like there was like with i was talking i think i was yeah i was messaging you about matt fraser i texted everyone yeah that, that, that article that came out and the dude was <laughs> That he would stop using knives, like sharp knives, closer to competition, so he didn't cut himself. And I'm like, I'm like, people won't do that. But like, that's they. Sh- he should be better than them. He stopped using knives because he was scared to cut himself. Like that's that that's that's a different type of breed. And like that's like, that should separate people. It's like Kevin hey, Lavroni was on Fuad's podcast. It's, it's really good. You should listen to it. It's it's just cool to hear. Like he's he's a, he's a very cool guy. Interesting guy. But he was um he was talking about like they were like is it rumors that you used to sleep on the floor and he's like no he's like because he would only he got hurt I guess once and he prepped so he would only prep like three or four months like he would stop working out for eight months and then prep for the Olympia in four months and like come in and get second um but like he's talking he's like yeah I would sleep on the floor he's like because that way it wouldn't he's like I, I would suffer and I would have to only think about this one thing he's like I only ate fish uh we say fish rice and broccoli um you know he's like i got some turkey burgers in for like the first month but after that it was only fish rice and broccoli he's like no seasoning was allowed because i wanted to make sure that i wasn't enjoying anything like it had to be all work <laughs> it's like jesus but like i think that that's like we talk about genetics stuff like, there's that lining up and then like the crazy like in this the strong you strong you fuck stuff. um the last chance you that's way different than the company we were for because it's their, it's their last chance. But this kid, but the U yeah. is the same. Like the U yeah. and that logo looks the same. Yeah. It always confuses Actually, me. Yeah, absolutely. But the one guy was like, "Yeah, I saw basketball and I saw basketball at, at like seven or six or something." And he's like, "I'd wake up every morning just to fucking dribble the basketball for four hours on my porch because I like it that much." I'm like, "Those are the guys that make it, like, because they're, yeah. they're obsessed. It's, it has not, it's just like a different crazy. Like, and most people who don't like." most people at those levels can have the same story. Like for the most part, it's like, like the built bodybuilders, like they just care so much about, it's like a singular focus. There is no other stuff. Like that's the thing. And then there's genetics, but like most people aren't yeah. really give that up. It's just like- it's Those two better. things have to line up. Yeah, and we work in the diet industry and it's not nothing against my clients a lot of times, but it's just like, you don't want it bad enough as this person who looks like this. Like that person, yeah, like they've got good genetics and they-, they they have whatever motivation, la da yada, like that motherfucker like has no life. Most people that look like that don't have a life. I can say that because I've been there. You don't have a life. Like, and just like, you don't like even, even like, I mean, I'm not in any kind of shape right now, but I'm getting back to that point of going towards there. Like I'm starting to cut and starting to get into all that stuff again. And I, it's like every week the dial starts turning a little bit more and I start caring about other stuff a little bit less. Like, yeah. it's like, like my people. day is, is my day is like, I work and I, I'm, I'm thinking about my training, like the night before I'm writing down my logbook and I'm like, okay, here's what I got to hit tomorrow. And it's cool. Cause I haven't been like this. I started working with uh, this guy, Nick Gloff, um, young kid, but just really, really, really great bodybuilding coach. I've never worked with, I mean, worth Ryan, but we were doing like, it was definitely not bodybuilding stuff. It was more about like, you know, positional stuff, but having that, like, kind of that drive and, and that mindset and um it's just a, it's a different thing and i'm like i'm dialed in 
but I'm like, I would, I'm never going to ask my clients to, to act like me, like, because they, they have lives, they've got children, they've got things they want to do. I, I don't, I have work, my wife, I don't have kids. I don't like, I, I have the gym and that's it. Yeah. And like, you're sad individual. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sad, I'm like, a sad you get, you person. Picture, it's like, it's like all the fun stuff. And like, I do this all the time, but it's like all the fun stuff that like you like to do, like you don't get to do that. Like you could, like, unless you're like a freak freak, like that's, that's the next level of genetics is like, I can do anything and you just show up and fucking wreck shit. If you're not that, then you actually have to have that singular focus. And like, that looks exactly like you said, like you're cutting out BJJ. I know it's because of the vaccine and shit, but like, yeah. you're like, not even, you're kind of thinking about it, but you're like, yeah, like it might ruin my training. And like, you have to, like you, most people you can't do <clears throat> One, like, I think that's the thing too, is like, well. like I, I talk to people too. And they're like, you know, like people are dieting. Let's, you know, we talk back to nutrition and say, you know, you know, obviously, like, you know, we, we joke about saying, like, you don't want it bad enough because, like, people want it, right? But but there's there's the difference between wanting to lose, like, 10% 10, 10 of your body weight and being getting metabolically healthy, which is what my concern is for people, versus getting shredded in a six-pack, which is a totally different story. And I'm like, we can get there, but it's not and, – and, like, for me, it is fun because I, I – like, I tell people all the time, like – what do you like to do? I was like, I don't really like to do stuff. Like I, I like to, I love BJJ. I love lifting. I like working. I like, you know, doing these podcasts, writing. I don't like to do, I don't want to do anything else. So like sitting down and eating a bowl of rice with chicken and nothing on it, like that is fun. See, that's the, that, that's, that's the interesting psychology of it. Cause like you're into that shit, but like the whole diet culture fucking conversation whatever all that fucking bullshit but like you've talked about nothing about diet even though diet's an important part of it it's because all the other shit is like important so diet's just like this thing that exists that you don't really care about for the other things which is weird not weird but yeah. like that's almost the solution is to like your identity or whatever like i know ben talks about this but it's situated outside of this thing and so you're not obsessing about food it's like it's yeah fun. and and honestly like so these things all drive each other right like because I'm super excited about my training, I want my training to go really well. So I'm going to nail my nutrition because, and, and, and even like certain things. Like, so my coach, he's like, he was like, I can give you a meal plan if you want. He's like, but you're a nutritionist. I trust that you know what to eat. He's like, so I'm just gonna give you like macros, but it's by meal. And like, I know that the important thing is really my daily allotment. And like, you know, it's probably not super important for time nutrient timing, but I hit everything of every meal. Like I get home from training and I have, you know, it was, I have my 60 grams of protein, my 120 grams of carbs and 10 grams of fat. Like that's what happens there. Like the other night I was like, Oh, I want to have an RX bar after dinner. And I'm like, Oh, I can't. I have just to have a bowl of protein powder because I only have 10 grams of fat in this meal. So I can't have that because it has 12 grams of fat or whatever. You may be the answer to this, but it's like, so folk, I know like Ben and well, they're just like the comments there is like, you don't want to major in the minors. But sometimes majoring the minors ends up making you hit the basics because you're trying to like do the minutia, but then like you we know that that won't really matter. But just the fact that you want to might kind of line up the other stuff is like that a thing? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. For so like like my my coach just cut cut my calories again. He's like, yeah, I just, just want to like amp it. I was like, honestly, once we start really dieting, I get so much more focused. Yeah. Because now I have to pay attention. Because if I'm eating 3,500 calories, I'm like, eh, I can miss this or miss that. It's like it's probably not a big deal. When I get down to you know 2,500 calories or something, and I'm eating 300 grams of protein a day, like I went to the store today. I usually eat 93.7 ground beef with my two eggs in the morning. I still want to get my two eggs because I want to get my choline in for the day. So I'm like, now I'm switching to 98% fat-free ground chicken for that meal. Like I know that like I don't have enough fat now for any ground beef like maybe i can have some steak a couple nights a week but that's kind of about it and it's like when i start dialing those things in to me that's like uh it helps me with everything else and like okay now i've got something else to focus on it's and not, it's like and it's i not, like that it's not food like this is the crazy thing like and I, i've actually steered away from this because i used to be like people would be like yeah does nutrition timing matter and all this stuff and, and Normally I'd be like, yeah, fuck no. Like it just hit your staff. But now like the people who are interested in that, I'm like, 
sort of like here's here's why like yeah it could it's a small percentage but a lot of times if i can push that button it's like that person is caring about this and so i know they're gonna hit all the other stuff because they're they're trying to go a level above even if they're not going to be good at that like they're kind of preparing to like do the stuff i wanted them to do and then like yeah well, let's work on the one percent who cares because like you can't do the one percent with the, the other stuff because it doesn't matter but if it yeah. if it, they want to pretend like they want to do that like that's it, it is helpful i find weirdly yeah, and even though we know it's not like deal. Well, there's like little things like intra workout shakes or like post workout meals that do they probably matter in a metabolic ward? No, but let's say this person wants to feel different on a training day versus a non training day, right? All right, cool. Protein shake and a banana after workouts. I've just added, you know, what 250 calories to your day on workout days, and you just don't get it on non workout days. All of a sudden, work carb cycling or something, and all it is is just like an extra meal afterwards. They feel good about it, it gives them a little bit of. of um you know recovery and cool boom it's weird like that identity shit like because like <laughs> I, yeah i feel bad a lot but it's just like the identity of like it's something other than this thing but like normally even if it's right or wrong the identity of a bodybuilder or someone who wants to get jacked is, like, they have their intro they have their pre they have like their workout day strategy and stuff and like yeah it's macros and that shit doesn't matter but i think it does matter because it's like they they're fitting into this thing that they want to do or be even if it is wrong and it's, it might be right. For yeah, that. I mean, I like, I like having that routine, like, yeah. and that's me. Like, it was funny because, because Ben and I, uh, Ben and Lisa and I just did a, a, a thing for bro research and it was kind of about, it was basically, it was basically about like psychology stuff and, and kind of tying that in. But one of the things we kind of touched on was like, Ben brought up this quote. It was like, you know, and I've talked about this before of like, what is discipline? And it's like, when you look at the the definition of discipline, it's not a positive thing. It's not something you really want. But I was like, you know, afterwards, Ben and I were talking, I was like, you know, what was so funny about that is because for, for you kind of, for Ben to say like, oh, there's kind of, there's a lot of negative connotations to discipline and like the whole discipline equals freedom thing, the Jocko thing. And I was like, the funny thing is, is like as much as I'll call bullshit on that and I'll call bullshit on the disciplines greater than motivation thing, for me, that kind of really quote unquote disciplined, strategic, repetitive, coordinated life yeah. is awesome. I love it. And I told Ben, I was like, the funny thing is, is for him to kind of be the same way as me, because I kind of shit on it, even though personally I, I live that way. And for the same thing for him, I'm like, nothing to me seems more Zen. I mean, more, more um, disciplined than Zen Buddhism Yeah. that, you know, he practices. I was like, all I can think of is like, that is the most disciplined motherfucker in the world is a guy who can sit there for eight hours and stare at a wall. Yeah. And like, that's where it's like, it's, it's funny. Cause like, it's almost like you wanting to shit on it is just like shitting on people's perception of what these things are. Not that. And that's exactly it. Cause it's just like, it's like the motivation thing. Like that's the, yeah we do text back and forth but like amongst our i guess clients but greater community it's like i need motivation to do this shit it's like you want to shit on the fact that okay you don't even have it right but we know what they mean it's like i want to feel good when i do this stuff and like it's almost like i don't know it's, it's not going to happen but you can't shit on it but you can kind of redefine it as something else where like discipline is like negative but like in the form of like a disciplined lifestyle and like with the, the pop culture side of it, like it's fucking awesome. I mean, there, uh, it, like, cause, cause it does in, in that, that, that quote, even though part, and again, I shit on it mostly because the people that bastardize and it's always some yeah. douche nozzle, like fucking 22 year old kid. Who's like, this is political freedom. And I'm like, you don't, you don't even know what that means. You asshole. You live in your mom's basement. Um, but you know, like, but like for me it really does especially because like if i don't have like a routine if i don't have a schedule like i'm a i'm not good yeah and so like if i have and i know that i have to eat this thing and like i was telling uh, i was talking to lisa you know i was saying you know like i notice like i can't work out in the morning because i like to have my first meal and then my pre-workout meal and working out at 2 p.m i always feel like i'd have a better workout it's totally mental it's totally psychological but it doesn't matter because i do and so like i I now like even on Saturdays and stuff when I have, you know, an earlier workout, I'm like, oh, shit, like, okay. And I just feel like it's not going to be as good. Yeah. It was like, it was similar to like, and again, I know this is totally fucked. Uh, Cause it, Mike was a Delta was fucked, but it was just like, I got kind of got into diet dieting or whatever fucking counting shit through like uh efers like uh whatever carb yeah, carb like, night. Car, no, it was actually carb backloading. It was after carb night. Uh, okay. 
it's, it's I don't know. It's basically, it was like selling you, you can eat donuts, expect your insulin, fucking whatever, get jacked. Point is, is like I would skip breakfast. And then I was like, I like skipping breakfast. And like skipping breakfast means I get big. Slowly learned that that's not true. Still <laughs> haven't eaten breakfast for like whatever, 10 years. And, and Mike Grizzotel came and did like a seminar and he was like, who doesn't eat breakfast or stuff? And I was, and who wants to get jacked? I was like, yeah. And he's like, why do you want to eat breakfast? I'm like, I just don't like, like breakfast. He's like, yeah, but do you want to get big? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, then you should probably eat breakfast. And I'm like, I still don't care. And so it's, it's, it's interesting because that's my routine though. And I, if I fuck up that routine, it fucks up the, the rest of the day and I, I won't get as big. So it's like, yeah, it's stupid, but it is helpful because I got hoodwinked as a kid and like that stuck even though yeah. like everyone shits on it. I was like, yeah, like Mike says fasting is good. So I'm like, yeah, maybe fasting. I'll just walk in the morning, but really it's helpful because of the routine aspect of it. Cause that's my anchor. Cause that's how I got into that. That's, diet. and that's, a, you know, that's what I talk about cl with clients all the time. It's like, do you find you're more successful if there's, if there's that one thing you do every day and they're like, and, and I'll tell you what, and I think that's why, I think it's it's a really big misstep for people to disconnect diet and nutrition and and fitness because for I would say a vast majority of my clients like even though without nutrition consulting they wouldn't probably lose weight even though they exercise all the time um, if they don't exercise they don't give a shit about the nutrition yeah. so it's like we have to keep that thing that piece in there and I actually had someone who's like hey so I think it's like I lose more weight when I don't do like these intense exercises and i just like walk instead and i'm like oh, 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 oh. this is not an if if then like this is like you're you're gonna keep working out like we don't want to take that piece away like that's actually i'm not gonna say more important but like in terms of metabolic health and in terms of like your life span like just those things like like i don't want you to stop lifting or stop doing orange theory or whatever it is you like to do like that just seems like just for the sake of losing weight that's just as bad as is going on some kind of fad diet there's one thing that you can learn from like i guess like bro culture meathead cultures i would say 90 90 percent of kids dudes because that's where i'm coming from is like that culture of like you know you wear the stringers and fucking go lift or they read the magazines and they went in they all got a love for nutrition backdoored through getting huge because eventually it doesn't it never started with oh i'm gonna eat like, well, eventually you know they eat chicken and rice so there was always that myth that 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 aura of that but it never really started till they're like okay hey, what do i need to do to do this thing like oh you got your six meals clean eating blah 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 blah. but that was an interest in nutrition had nothing to do with an interest in nutrition because most people don't go into lifting they're like i'm interested in nutrition i'm going to go lift to maximize my nutrition needs it's like that doesn't ever happen i don't think that's ever happened not once and so it is helpful like the, so i think you do backdoor through exercise even if for the simple fact they think it's going to help them which it does but it's like it, that's where i see it every single time yeah and it's like you know it's interesting because like since i've been working with nick like his the the place he works at is is he works for matt jansen who's uh you know, he coaches that the kid nick walker he coached um um he coached the mr olympia 212 uh winner this year he did and, uh yeah 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 yeah. he's i think he might have done nutrition i think meadows might have done uh not nick but but matt matt jansen yeah. his his boss yeah. um and like he's he's a really interesting guy because like he he definitely says like you know and nick repeats this as well um is that within the bodybuilding world everyone talks about like nutrition is the is the most important piece nutrition is the most important piece because if you do enough drugs and do enough volume you'll probably get bigger um and the nutrition is this piece but like he's like i think training is the piece and i like i really agree with him i was like you know there's like if you half-ass training like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just a different thing. And and you see that, that I look at these guys, like, you know, for some reason in the fitness world, because no one's actually ever seen a real bodybuilder. Cause these fucking guys who are 145 so saying, pounds. Like, they don't see the genetics. Yeah. Like they talk about yeah. it. You haven't fucking seen it. Cause you don't lift those. And, pussy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause you're, if you're, if you're spending your life doing fucking corrective exercises, like don't fucking, they'll say things like bodybuilders aren't strong. And then I look at all these bodybuilders, like repping four Oh five on incline, like for like you know, 15 reps. I haven't seen a weak bar. No. Maybe weak no. comparatively the size of someone else who's 300 and a power lifter, but like those people don't exist either. There's like a few of them. Yeah. So stronger than literally everyone else. And and nowadays every power lifter that's worth his shit looks like a fucking bodybuilder. They're all jacked as fuck. <laughs> There's actually nothing like, 
Yeah. There's more yeah, I mean, there's, there's... 180 pound bodybuilders than there are like stronger than those bodybuilder powerlifters. Cause most of the bodybuilders are actually probably stronger on average per weight. I would say hundred percent. I mean, when I look at Nick doing fucking seven, what did you do? 765 for like five on squats or something stupid. Like, and he's not a power lifter. And honestly, all those big bodybuilders, like the ones that you were talking about, like the ones where it's like, hey, this is what a bodybuilder is, regardless of whether he's on the Olympia, like he fucking is jacked. They're all repping like 450 if they tried with their little knee wraps for like 15, 20. Like I've seen it. That's fucking strong. No matter who, like, that's I mean, stronger than everyone, pretty much. Nick, Nick posted something the other day about like why he works strength work in because he wants to work in higher rep ranges and it helps him get there. He's like, because I could be like everyone else and just do four or five plates aside for 15 reps for the rest of my career. And I'm like, <laughs> like squatting 495 for 15 reps is what people do for 10 to 20 years. Like they never progress. <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, like that. And that's like, that's when you're like, you're saying like, oh, this guy's just plateaued. He's weak is because he only can do 500 pounds for 15. <laughs> Like, like, fuck, shut up. Like, there was this video of Kai Green. So they're like, Kai Green, like, does, he was like the mind muscle connection guy. And he, he's strong. There's this one video where he was like training that chick in, in Brooklyn, like the, the other black chick. She was like, he was kind of her protege. Anyways, long story short, is they did a squat workout. And he just kept putting on plates. And he was at like 495. And he was just like repping it out easy. And like, it wasn't a hard workout for him. And I'm like, that dude has like 10 in the tank. Like, how is that weak? Like, it's crazy. Like that's that's super strong in every other field other than the powerlifter guy who's 280 can do that. Yeah, like that's fine, but like like this guy doesn't give a shit about that and he can fucking do it. That's the beauty of it, is like they're strong and they don't care about being strong, really. Yeah. Like like what's, you, you can't you can't get that big without being strong and you can't be that you know, you could be strong and not be big, but you can't you can't be big and not be strong. They're, like not, you said, maybe. they're not the strongest okay we get it like right. that, that doesn't mean they're weak it's like they're literally not even trying i bet you give most most of those big bodybuilders like a year-long strength cycle into it they would fucking wreck shit like who was um like you see it all the time like the, the look at dude, look sorry. at ben pollock yeah ben, perfect well he 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 went I mean, the he's a power lifter first yeah but what a fucking freak yeah he, he's like a good, he's like, a good example of someone who who, who was very smart because he's like a, I think he's a PhD now. He's a PhD, yeah. yeah. But like, he, like you you can make it work. Like that dude, ugh, it's he's 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 phenomenal. He hasn't won though, right? So he's like the power lifter who's strong, who put his nuts out and fucking got big and was like, see, we can do this too. But he he's the epitome of like he's a power lifter who will never win the Olympia. But he's fucking massive, and there's a lot of dudes that are massive like that who are super strong too. But it's like, you know, Dante Trudell will always make the argument of like, who are the who are the biggest bodybuilders? Like, right? Like, you know, like the guys like Johnny Jackson or uh or Ronnie, they were all power lifters. They were all fucking benching, squatting, deadlifting, heavyweight, and then they got into bodybuilding. So they added a bunch of accessory stuff, which I think the I think the weird thing is that there's become this separation when it used to just be like like if you look at all the, like the seventies and eighties, like half those dudes were power lifters half the season, and then bodybuilders the other half, or they would just kind of go back. Sometimes even weightlifters in the middle. That was another thing that like they, they kind of glamorized the old style. I'm like, that's still kind of what people do. Like people still like like Arnold Miles. Like you want a pump and iron? They were powerlifting. Like what was that one squat workout they were doing? They were basically like squatting yeah. 500 until they like collapsed, right? Like, I don't, oh well, I don't. I don't actually think it was that much weight. I think it was like. Uh, it might have been it might have been 405 maybe i think it was actually 315 but it might have been four but it was like till you're that done that's that deep like that's like where it's like that someone's like yeah i will squat at 500 so that's weak i'm like do you fuck, you know how many reps he did that for and how low he did it like that's so yeah. hard dude like yeah. and it doesn't matter like if you're going to like failure like that i mean that's the other thing it's, it's like i guarantee you put that weight on with most power lifters who work in ones threes and fives and you tell them to do 10 10 with 50 yeah. percent <laughs> And they're like, I think me, like I, I power lifted what since football, so like, and then I actually yeah. one, one and a half years of bodybuilding, like nothing, like just even trying to get jacked. Fuck, like it took me like four months to get in shape to even do the workouts, and then I was like, yeah, bodybuilding is way harder. Like I get the whole, like, you got to be crazier maybe to like lift in powerlifting and like kind of go to that zone, but bodybuilding training is a fucking grind. Powerlifting training is not a grind. I don't care what anyone says. It's fucking like twenty minutes of work. <laughs> well, it's like it's like, like I was saying, like my coach like basically called me a pussy and was like, "You had more reps than you on that." And I was like, 
like in my mind, like, and it was on a hack squat. So like, you know, if I failed, it was fine. In my mind, my muscles were tearing. Like I was like, there's no way I've got another rep there. And he's like, oh yeah, you've got more in you. And I'm like, fuck. I think that's where it helps and I'm, people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, like having a coach is nice. Ben, like I, I, I did like literally nine more reps just to beat Ryan on the, on the leg press that day. And I, I, oh, I, we were down at Ben's. I was like, yeah, my knee hurts. Like I'm only going to do like four. And then Ryan did like whatever, 12. And I was like, fuck it. I'm, and I was like, oh man, like I'm literally training on my own, trying to be a bodybuilder. And I'm still under doing everything. I'm like, I don't think I can train by myself. I'm not as crazy as I thought I was. I'm crazy around other people. Like they make me crazy, but like on my own, I, I don't think I can do it. Like, I'm just, a, I'm a bitch. Yeah. It's, it's definitely hard. like, I don't know. Like, in, it's also like, so if I'm doing, inc- I was doing incline press the other day and I got nine on, on, on my reps, which it was, I beat my reps by one. So I was happy. But I was like, if I had a spotter, I would have probably gotten 10 or 11, but by myself, like I'm, I'm not going to be that asshole who's fucking sitting there with the barbell in his lap trying to fucking squirm his way out of the out of the fucking seat because he couldn't finish a rep. Well, that's why Nick's impressive. Or just even like those strong bodybuilders that kind of just like isolate themselves. Or like Ryan. Ryan's the same way. Yeah, um, Ryan really is. Like, I, I don't have, like, they must have like major demons. I was like, my, my I need more demons. Like, I want to win around other people. But like on my own, I can't dig there unless it's like deadlifting. Because for whatever reason, well, Ryan doesn't train with anybody. I know. I think Nick has a training partner. Like, I, I think, think most of these big guys, yeah, yeah, most of these big guys have, I don't know, it's got to be, it's hard to not, and if you're not, like, they're in gyms where there's people around and they know everybody. When you're the big guy, no, you're never alone. Like, when you're the big guy in the gym, like, I think everyone wants to work out. But Ryan, like, he's just, he's, he's, he is, a, he's like the most antisocial lifter. Which I guess, I mean, I'm kind of antisocial. Like, when we're actually lifting, it's not like we're sitting there having fun and joking around either. Yeah. Like, we've lifted together. It's not like, like I, you know, it's funny because like we, we stronger you things. We <laughs> these these you know group meetings. We see like they're all getting together for like a CrossFit workout to have a good time, and we're sitting there just like punishing ourselves in the corner and not talk. Like it's like this is not this. Is, I'm not I'm not here for a fun time. <laughs> we're here to work out. Like, we can go between sets and stuff, but like like I guess I missed that about like the, that that was the one thing. So like if we even circle it back to like lifting for sports and stuff. Like I think the environment like in terms of that was oh, like yeah. probably the most helpful thing. Cause like that's, I probably got the strongest, not the strongest for the period of time for like when I was like lifting with people at this facility that was basically Joe DeFranco. So it was like a Joe DeFranco copycat. Yeah. Right? And it, it was sick. Like I, I still haven't had a better time lifting. Cause again, pre-workouts fucking dry pre-workouts. Like that was the oh, thing. Yeah, dry, it, dry scoop and, like it. we all had our intra shakes and then it was just, like chains, like uh, bands and, lifting lots like i if i had that all the time i bet i would have massive like not that i didn't get massive on my own but for that period of time like i got big yeah Way bigger like, than I did the other times i think like i mean i was like before even before covid like costa rica i started working out in brooklyn at this place my buddy alec and uh all these dudes were like Olympic weightlifters, which I wasn't living life with, but it was just being in that environment where everybody is like pushing each other and like in that like super positive space. It's uh, it's, it's, it's pretty special. And those dudes are strong, man. Like that's one of the crazy things you see Olympic lifters, man, people aren't that big. Some of them are pretty big, but you know, just the weights they're throwing away. I mean, they're, they're squatting, their squats all look effortless, you know, and they're like, they're squatting 500 pounds for three reps. And it's just, but it's, like what's that like travis match like so like obviously big name in the olympic lifting world but like so they came with us to jamaica for that 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 sprinting that's right. forever. and he brought two of his like like a girl and guy but two of his top athletes and like they're not throwing around powerlifting weight but like they were fucking working hard like they were doing like big weight for their 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 levels and i'm like man they're intense like they train fucking intense even though there's only like whatever 12 lifts or the fuck they're doing i was like yeah serious like this is a serious fucking lifting protocol it, it, it's impressive because like th- that's where it's kind of cool it's like you can treat it as serious as that and like it's legit well like, it's also cool. like it's very mentally taxing like yeah. i get anxious watching only lifters because mm. there's there, there's so much like they you know off by a centimeter they miss the lift and it's like heartbreaking and they get mad like like, oh yeah it's like powerlifting yeah i get it. it's like raw strength and stuff but you can't 
muscle or you kind of muscle snatch sort of but like you said if you're off a little bit like it's not fucking happening and yeah. if, if you try like it's probably a very high risk of injury and so and, like, and if you get frustrated it gets worse yeah and then they'll like all of a sudden get it lined up and like how the fuck did you hit that you, 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 <laughs> it's, you just missed that three times in a row and then you got it like i don't know they were <laughs> different breed i don't it's just like interesting looking at these little lifting subcultures because like i said there's a lot of evidence-based bullshit or even the fitness industry talk about how they know what they're fucking talking when they look at these people like go into any olympic like high level olympic lifting gym and then you can see what that is it's not what you're saying it is there's a lot of variables outside of this shit just like and if you like did any underground powerlifting where like there's fucking needles and shit and heavy metal music like it's fucking different than you think it is they're not just like mongoloids it's like this is legit and, like that i guess i'm yeah. very happy i got a go through a lot of that because i can say with confidence yeah holy shit but like it's different than what you're saying it is it's not just the metrics yeah it is but like you guys train like shit <laughs> you don't train hard enough like that's the that's that's basically it fuck the genetics like a lot of you like that matters but you still don't train hard enough that's my thing too is it's like i know it's fucking popular to shit on the uh you know you don't train hard enough crowd but like it is like you know it's like everyone wants to be the fucking smart guy now and i'm like cool like there's three big smart guys and i respect the shit out of them but there's a reason that being smart fucking it was like i was like there's a lot of big dumb guys <laughs> you know and like i train like idiots I, I don't listen to them either but i kind of do like it's like they did something right they fucking went around people who like did i don't know i always say stupid as it's like good thing but like I think a lot of the, the stupid people got real fucking big. So are they that stupid? Like maybe if they're not healthy, but like, uh, like, like, what do you yeah, really it, want? Do you want to get big or not? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's if there's if there's the choice of like the big dudes at the gym lifting, and me and everyone saying, look at his form, it's shitty. Like da da da, da and 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 you can go train with them, or you got the 150 pound fucking uh, you know pencil pushing warriors over here that are fucking doing their single arm fucking stacked pull down whatever fucking bullshit and it's like okay cool like am i gonna go train with them no because they're a bunch of fucking pussies yeah and like yeah that's like the pure ice like, this is where it's like i actually like all that stuff it's just like at the same time i, I want to learn it so that i can maybe apply it but like i don't know dude like just being lifting like that is more helpful not lifting like that sorry if you want to well, get like what we were talking about like you know like this argument of like our deadlifts a good back exercise it's like okay well maybe from a biomechanic standpoint the actual muscles getting hit in that aren't great but i'll tell you what i've never met a big deadlifter with a small back yeah my erectors are and i've met a lot of guys who fucking do rdls and all kinds of fucking perfect you know back and do lots of rows and cable rows and lat pull downs that are fucking tiny yeah, it's almost like the compensation or whatever you whatever the for that crowd is say. I don't know, dude. You, we're loading it heavier. That that's kind of where you can use like yeah, volume and load matters, but it's like good volume and load or just like stupid amounts of weight. That's where it's like yeah, like. Eh. But like, then I, you I get don't... the rom crowd like, but that just takes longer. I think I think they might be more right because they could probably lift longer. But there's a lot of people sprinting to get fucking massive, and they're huge. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, range of motion thing is, you know, that's also though. Like, you can't like completely have. I mean, do, do you have to fucking touch your butthole to the platform every time you squat? Probably not. But can you do quarter squats and expect to grow? Also, pro. I mean, yes, you could, but it's gonna it's it's gonna require a lot of weight and probably not great results. You know, there's a, there's a reason that those the like bodybuilders who do shitty half squats have to use a lot of leg press leg extension you know like there's probably a reason for that and they have to do so much volume yeah which is just like i don't know i can't but you look at like lu zhu zhang or something you know some olympic lifter who squats you know pretty pretty deep now his knees are probably fucking complete shit from smashing out of the bottom of that thing all the time but find someone who's like massive who isn't fucked up like i don't think it exists like like ronnie is a bad example because he was like he broke he broke his back like, re, like real fuck but like i'm pretty sure anyone who's who's at that strength level is super fucked forever like, i don't think i think the cost of getting there is you being fucked up like i don't think I there's mean, any way around that because find me someone it, who's not hurt it's unnatural yeah 
Like it, it's mm. completely unnatural. It's not even helpful. Like evolutionarily, like you're dead. Like and you're even yeah, like it's too much muscle. <laughs> it, you require too much food. Yeah. Like, like you're it's, you're it's, just a wait you're a fucking waste. Fucking now we've gotten to like, yeah, fuck bodybuilding. Waste of space. I love it. <laughs> but that's the thing, and that's what I think is so funny is because we spend so much time doing something that's fucking evolutionary we're dumb. Like it's stupid. And then we're trying to like like we need to do this to be healthy. I, I just don't think that they're like people talk about how they maybe could do it better. And like I've been there. Like, how can I maybe do this better and have longevity? And like I don't know if that exists, dude. I think at some point you can't peer eye drill yourself to be better. Like it's just you you either want to get big and hurt or like you don't really want to get that big. Like it's just you have to it's it's you have to sell your soul. I think you have yeah. to sell your soul. What's funny, we talk about health and it's funny because like I, you know, I, I talk a lot about values with my clients and you know, I'm like, part of the thing too, is when I want them to identify values, I think they automatically want to make sure that it's health related because they feel like, oh, if I say, you know, I want to be healthy, then I can tie in workout and exercise. And I'm like, I was like, what? I mean, you guys probably think that health is one of my values. I was like, it's not, I was like, I don't fucking like, it's a, it's a byproduct. And yeah, it's helpful for me to be healthy because that can allow me to do the things I want to do. But like, I don't spend time in the gym or like all these things to be quote unquote healthy. Now, maybe it, it's, it's to fucking, you know, not be on the, in the, you know, inside of a fucking bottle or, uh, you know, in a rage fucking fest, but like, it's not because I'm like, you know, Oh, I can't wait to see my blood pressure get to, you know, X over X or get my heart. I want to get my heart rate down to 45. I don't give a fuck about that. Like, as long as I'm not like in a danger spot, like I'm totally I don't I, I really don't they care. Don't really care. Like I think the only people that care are the ones who don't have it. Like I know it sounds maybe bad, but like most people like I don't I don't have that many people's goals where they're like, yeah, I want to be I guess they say healthy, but like I don't think they mean it. And like kind of like with the discipline thing, I was like because Ben would say metabolically healthy. And like no one wants that. Like I don't think anyone has that goal other than the person who needs to who their doctor says you need to lose forty pounds because you're yeah. gonna, you're gonna have diabetes. I think those are the only people that care or have a high blood pressure. Like no one else really cares until they they, they care. So you have to backdoor a lot of that stuff, which ends up helping health. But like no one's is like, yeah, I can't wait to be the most healthy. Well, so people say to me like, I want to, you know, I think health is an important thing, and I want to be viewed as like a healthy person, and I'm like. Oh, I was like, that's, I was like, that's, that's not one of my concerns. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I would like to be viewed as a jacked person. <laughs> and if people want to perceive that as healthy, cool. I, and that's where it's like, I think we bring up Ben a lot, but like Ben brings it up. Like what is healthy? And I think like, honestly, like if it's kind of like, what does being a bodybuilder mean? I think the health term is like people who eat vegetables and fucking eat whole foods and like go to like high end grocery stores, like in like our hippies. Like that's Which that's is, like the only version of health that I th I can actually conceptualize that people want because they want to like be that thing because it's supposed to be good. So that which is funny because I mean that's kind of me. I mean that's what I mean. Like it's, you know, I, more yeah. than a lot of the vegans like the vegans eat vegetables and shit and have fancy recipes, but I'm like. I'm way more hippie than you. I'm fucking on a walking treadmill for fuck's sake. Like I actually want to be healthy. Like I got, I got 7,700 steps already today by just going out for a walk. It's nice here. So I can do it. Cause I said something about getting a walking treadmill to Nick and he's like, yeah, it's good. He's like, but don't you know discount the be benefits of being outside. He's like, you're down South now. I was like, you're right. Cause, cause it's like, he's from upstate New York. So he's like, you know, he's probably, he's probably he lives in Florida now. And I was like, you know, that's a good point. And I was like, I don't really have an excuse. And, it's, and again, back to the, you know, importance of having a coach. I, and I'm like, I know this. I mean, this is literally what we're working on is talking about how important walking is. And I wasn't getting the steps when you do, but just someone else being like, dude, come on. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. I know I'm fucking going, I'm getting up. I'm going right now. Yeah. Well, I think my, my, and this is where like, I'm totally turning into hippie for sure. Cause now like health, I don't want to say health, but like longevity, like now that I'm like thinking about like I have a daughter, I was like, I don't want to die yeah. 50. And I'm like, I'm like, what's gonna help that? And it was like being outside steps. But like I was telling so many people about fucking steps because we're doing this book and shit. And I'm like doing all this research and I'm like, man, I'm like I'm literally a hypocrite. I'm getting four thousand steps. Yeah. 
Dude, I was getting four thousand steps a few days a week, like when busy work days. Yeah, it's in a lot. Like that's that's literally, and I I know we have a bunch of clients. So like, what should I aim for? And I'm like, ah, oh, just aim for better right now, and we'll work on it. But like four thousand is fucking low. Two thousand is like you might as well like not care about health because like you you're still. Dude, I get two, I get two thousand if I don't if I don't even step outside of my house. Yeah, like that's like nothing. Like it's it's actually like if someone can't get four thousand, which I I couldn't. Like I was at about four thousand. Like, not that they're a piece of shit, but like I was a piece of shit. So take that for whatever you want. Like I yeah. was like, because now that I get like twelve thousand, like damn, dude, like, like fucking world's really against us. And like, <laughs> like, well, it's also there's these this this part of it too is like you know especially if someone works out or lifts heavy, does these things. I feel like a little bit of those like nagging like kind of pains and aches kind of go away a little bit when you start walking more. Yeah, like, and that's that whole idea of like that was more or less like mine was less about the health, but more about like opening up a hip joint and hip extension because like being impressed as a lifter, especially like if you're trying to lift like a moron, like we'll say like want to get big and strong and shit. Usually that comes with like very like you're compressing on eccentrics and like you're just always compressing. Yeah. Sitting, basically compressing you're sitting in hip flexion with no tension and you're like fucking round back or whatever like it's not like exaggerated but long story short is like walking is the opposite of that so it's like i'm lifting in the gym and then i'm essentially mimicking a shitty deadlift position all day and like that's not helpful and i was like i feel way better just even walking like i used to hurt all the time just walking yeah my hip surgery needs surgery but i feel 10 times better just yeah. because I have some rotation, even just the rotation of it is helpful, which yeah. it, it, if I was lifting probably would make me bigger. Heart and you're probably down. actually getting a better chance at hip extension. The more Very, you do it, like, you know, they're loosening down. up. So it's like, you know, just by like being able to get that rotation and actually, you know, getting some glute firing and all the things that probably weren't happening before it gets better and better. Like Cass always talks about it. Like with the, like no one's training glute meets a lot of times, right? But I think like without actual hip extension and rotation, no one's training glute meets just even in like daily systemic stuff. And so yeah. that gets around it by getting full range of motion stuff. But if you look at all people's lifts, like most of them aren't really getting hip extension, which then really they can't build the top glute. But like the glute meets, yeah, they get a little bit of glute max, but then a lot of it becomes rectors and shit. And so it's like, I think walking actually helps that. I think it would make you you could possibly have a bigger ass <laughs> because you'll use your ass for shit. That sounds awful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a poor choice of words. Uh, yeah. like, like if you, 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 I think like sitting actually makes your fucking glutes smaller. They could call it like fucking glute amnesia or whatever, but I think it's just a hip extension thing because you're not actually yeah, any I, I, or hip extension. I, I, think, I think the whole glute thing was probably missing the boat on hips. Yeah. I think the whole thing has been like, you know, everyone's everyone was focused on glutes, but I think what they were missing was that hips it were just not because everyone's hips are fucked. I mean, mine are, and especially I think lifters more than anybody. And I think it, some of that that's the advantage of some of the PRI stuff is that they they talked more about that and like kind of said, like, hey, you know, you guys are no one's getting full hip, hip extension. It's like, okay. But then, but again, I think part of that is because who walks? Yeah, well, no. in PRI is a lot of their stuff. Like, really, if you boil down to it, like a lot of the drills, like with the stupid and shit. But they're just trying to get gait and reciprocal motion. But really, they're yeah. just, like, if you look at gait, like what's they're finishing the fucking hip extension a lot of times. Look at what Cass is doing with his Cass bridge, which is not Brecken Terrace's hip. It's fucking Cass's. <laughs> but his is basically like it's just like a partial hip extension drill like he's literally focusing yeah. on that last part it's just like it's good to spend time there because we don't and so that's where i think the walking is helpful yeah like i think it's helpful for health but like that's where i don't know I, i'm i'm toying with it i don't know dude my my adductors and my glutes are getting fucking quite a bit bigger just walking so maybe i will get maybe my legs are fucking grow because they haven't been your, growing your ab abductors or adductors adductors like they're like so I, I do the adductor machine now. Yeah, you're talking about which short shorts. Fuck me. It, it, it feels really weird as a guy doing that because like guys don't use it, but I think they should. It just every like, bodybuilder does. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, so so on my on my um hamstring day, 
my basically my warm up session is like it's not warm ups. I mean, they're I'm doing heavy sets of like 15 to 20 on the adductor machine. I start with uh, hamstring curls, then adductors, and then I do RDLs. And um, if you do the adductor right, you get some of that proximal hamstring too. Um, like when your adductors are lit up, like everything else functions so much better. Like it's just because that's a, that's a muscle that you really don't, you don't, I mean, you feel it sometimes after heavy squats and stuff, but you don't really, or lunges or something like that, but you don't really work it directly. There's never much isolation for it. So really having that thing firing up, man, it's, it, it makes the rest of your leg session feel really good. That's, that's the one machine I actually do like. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's like it's everything else feel better. Because there's, there's no other machine that there's no other way to mimic it really. There's the, 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 what, the, the fucking clamp. Yeah. The, what, from the nineties. Oh, the, the Suzanne Summers thing. The Thigh uh, Thigh Buster. Thigh Master. Yeah. Thigh Master, yeah. Maybe we should get one of those. I should just to do that while I'm okay. Let's well, it's the, it's the stretch for me too. That machine stretches me out because I'm not very flexible, <laughs> man, dude. Is- it's I'm telling you, man. I had these short shorts on and I was like, motherfucker, this is not this is not it's making anyone happy. In your gym to do it, what's that? It's socially acceptable in your gym to use it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think I feel like it's not like when I was doing it, everyone was like looking at me, and like the girls were like, are you done yet? Like, yeah, fuck, but you you're like a you're a 240 pound guy in a gym doing the adductor. No one's gonna say shit to you. <laughs> and I and I was like not lifting heavy at the time. <laughs> oh, like why is the dude like on the hack squat with like one one forty five? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I can deadlift more than you. That's all that matters. That's like I can't. Squat. But you never deadlifted in that gym. <laughs> not not heavy at least because the bars were like shitty. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna end this. Gonna, All right, we're doing this. What we're, we're gonna do this every Thursday. Basically, the every whole week. thing is like we're gonna have guests and stuff. But if you, if you like it, like it. I don't know. Usually, we'll, we'll start. We'll, I think we'll post up like a Q and A, like put up a, some questions on Instagram and see if anyone wants us to answer, and then we'll we'll go through. Yeah, because the main thing we, we were gonna talk about what we we're doing with nutrition stuff, and that never went anywhere um, because we yeah. totally forgot because we're talking about pump shit. So actually, I guess that is kind of what we were trying to do, anyways. Like this is about like lifting culture anyways and a lot of the shit we do which is kind of fun yeah. but that is the so you fucking i am still yeah. even though i haven't been lifting like i still I, i'm still in this world dude I, I told you i told you man kevin Lavroni took eight months off every year and came back he, he uh, came back bigger i think i would do like i haven't lost any like anyways that's i've, I've lost like 10 pounds well yeah dude i bet you you'd put i bet you you'd put like 15 pounds on in the first eight weeks yeah i haven't i haven't never not lifted ever like since i've been like since i got like the york fucking gym at like 12 years old lifted like literally every week yeah that's Down crazy sit-ups fucking the thing like the 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 stupid fucking chest squeeze with the, the, uh, the, the best the bench press then you switch the bench press because you put the pins in like what a shitty oh, machine fuck yeah like, <laughs> maybe i should go get that okay um yeah Tune in next Thursday. I don't know. Do you have anything to end with? Find no. You no. 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 Good. Okay. See you guys. That's right. I have Rouse with an alligator. I don't tussle with a whale. I don't handcuff lightning. Throw thunder in jail. You can't stop me. I'm going to win. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. I won't quit. I just keep getting stronger. 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 stronger.